In this video, we're going to continue to talk about the issue of causality in econometrics. And specifically, we're interested here in whether infrastructure spending in a conflict zone actually causes a decline in violence. And we said in the last video that just comparing the basic means between the, those states which did receive infrastructure spending and those that didn't, didn't actually give us a fair representation of this causal effect because, in fact, there was a degree of selection bias happening, whereby states were selected to have infrastructure spending if their level of violence was particularly high. And in the last video, we started off and we defined basically what we called the sort of potential level of violence in a given district. And we said that any district or any state has two different potential levels, regardless of the state they're actually in. Or, or I should say that I'm using the word state to mean two different things here. Perhaps I'll say district from now on. Each district can be in one of two states. It can either be in the state V1I if the level of infrastructure spending is above some sort of threshold. In other words, there is infrastructure spending. Or it can be equal to V0I if there is no infrastructure spending or it's below some sort of threshold. And it's important to note that these are just the potential levels of violence. And they're regardless of the actual state which the system is in. It's regardless of whether in fact there was infrastructure spending or not. And the way in which I explained that was saying that basically in the in the sort of the initial decision taken by some sort of governmental agency is whether to provide a given district with infrastructure spending, so in other words, if DI is equal to one, or whether not to provide infrastructure spending, in other words, DI is equal to zero. So there are these two groups of states, one which is the top one, which does receive infrastructure spending, and one which is the bottom one, which doesn't receive infrastructure spending. And within each of these groups, we can define, or within a particular member in this group rather, we can define the difference between the level of violence had they received infrastructure spending and the level of violence had they not received infrastructure spending. And I explained that in the group which did receive infrastructure spending, this second observation, this V0I, is not observed because we know that the states have received infrastructure spending and there is no parallel universe where we can compare what would have happened to a district had they received infrastructure spending with the circumstance where they had not. So this V0I is actually counterfactual in this top group. Whereas in the bottom group, we can similarly define a delta I, which is the difference between V1I and V0I, except now the difference is that we observe V0I, whereas we don't observe V1I. This is now the counterfactual. But we said that Nevertheless, this is the sort of ultimate goal. What we would like to know for each different state is the difference between V1i and V0i because this difference here denotes or would represent the causal effect of infrastructure spending. Okay, so that's where we got to at the end of the last video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the actual observed state of the given district in terms of the level of violence. And I'm going to call that VI. And we know that the actual observed level of violence is equal to V1i, that's if di is equal to 1, because we've already spoken about how this is the thing which we observe in the top group. And then we observe V0i if di is equal to 0, because that's this term here in the bottom group. And when I represent it like this, we can actually write vi in a much more handy way. We can write that VI is equal to V0I plus the difference between V1I minus V0I times DI. And that's particularly useful because this term inside the parentheses here is actually the causal effect. So that's what we're actually interested in estimating. And just to check that it sort of actually collapses back to these values here and here, we could substitute in the values of DI. If DI is equal to 1, then what happens is that this term here is 1 and the V0Ys cancel and we're just left with V1I. If DI is equal to 0, this whole second term is 0 and we're just left with V0Y. So that's collapsed back to this term at the bottom here. 
So this term does sort of make sense. And now that we've defined the actual observer level of violence, what we can do is we can start to understand what is it which we're actually observing when we compare the means of these two groups in terms of the level of violence. Essentially what we're doing is we're saying, well, let's take the expected level of violence in a state given that that state does receive infrastructure spending. And then let's compare that with the level of violence in a state given that they don't receive infrastructure spending. So when we write it like this, we can use this formula up here, enable, which enables us to write this difference of basic means in a slightly different form. We know that when di is equal to one, so when we're considering this term on the left here, that essentially we're just left with v1i. So this top term just becomes the, expert, uh, the expectation rather of v1i given that di is equal to one. And then what we're taking away from that is the expectation of what well, then when di is equal to zero, essentially this whole second term disappears and we're just left with v0i given that di is equal to zero. And we're gonna work away at this expression in the next video and it's gonna enable us to see both what is the average causal effect and also what is the selection bias.